BioBalance HealthCast, episode 246, Why Doctors Use Off-Label Drugs. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. This week we're going to talk about three drugs primarily, drugs that matter for many of the people who regularly follow our podcast and, and read our information on the web. Uh, the drugs are metformin, Arimidex, and finasteride. And a lot of people that have the concerns that Kathy treats in her practice are taking one or more of these drugs. And we want to talk about why that is, what those things do, and what side effects might be involved for basically three conceptual points. We want to talk about drugs that are classified as off-label use. We want to talk about the importance, and this is so incredibly important, and it's it's so screwed up by so many people, <laughs> of following the directions the doctor gives you and taking the medicines the way you're supposed to take them. So many people play with their medicines. They double up today because they missed yesterday, or they don't take it in the morning and they take it at night, or they decide that they read something on the internet, <laughs> or they drove past the mailman and stopped, and he said he talked to the milkman, who <laughs> wife takes and, and they decide oh that yeah. sounds good and they stop doing what they're asked to do to get better it's called a treatment plan for a reason and then the, fi- <laughs> the final thing the plan is, is the to, doctors. to factor in any medicine in terms of overall balancing of goals medically what are you trying mm-hmm. to accomplish how do these things play together you know do, do they play well with friends mm-hmm. or will there be complications so we want to talk about these three drugs in response to those three categories so That's let's right. start with the first drug and talk about metformin metformin is um, a medication that is FDA approved for diabetes and it what it does is you have to understand how it works mm-hmm. it actually makes people's cells insulin sensitive which we've talked about before which means that insulin carries blood sugar into the cell Mm -hmm. okay so insulin has to it's like the piggyback so this the sugar can get in if it isn't if the cell's not sensitive it bounces off and makes fat so you can so it eat. Sensitizes the it cell. sensitizes the cell. So it will actually accept the insulin and the blood sugar to make energy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you just make fat and you're tired. You know, so it's so not everyone has this problem, but it is a problem of menopause. Mm-hmm. It's a problem when testosterone drops, when estrogen do- drops in women, both both of those in women and when testosterone drops in men. And you can see it as somebody getting swollen, somebody getting belly fat. I mean, these are these are and gaining weight, and you can't stop gaining so, weight. It's so the, a progressive weight gain. You naturally evolve into these conditions as you age into and out of menopause uh, and loss of testosterone and estrogen. That is, if when we're young, we can we can mess up on our diet and exercise. Abuse we can That's abuse right. ourselves. We can overstress. We can do all of these things, and our body forgives us. Right. Okay. When we hit menopause, when we hit andropause, when we hit testosterone deficiency, then we get no forgiveness. So everything that we do ends up giving us exactly what it should have given us when we were young. The margin for error diminishes. Right, right. So so you, I have people coming up, I could stop eating for three days and lose 10 pounds when oh, yeah. I was 30. And I'm like, sure, you were 30. And that shouldn't have really happened, but your body adjusted to it and so that was great for you but it's now going to act like a regular body (laughs) you don't get all those benefits of being young i used to be able to just stop eating bread products and in a week or 10 days i'd lose 10 pounds now i I don't never do that now i I don't eat bread at all (laughs) and i'm not losing any weight as a result of not eating bread right because age even age even if your hormones are perfect age makes you more insulin resistant Mm -hmm. and so we don't know exactly why that mechanism is however Metformin is this awesome drug because it's used with other diabetic drugs so that what little insulin somebody has or is making actually gets into the cells. It doesn't waste the insulin of a diabetic who doesn't make enough insulin. Mm -hmm. And it works with the other drugs, so you can combine them. In fact, I used to do that with some of my patients and their endocrinologists probably 15 years ago would go, you should never do that because... I knew that if they kept on the same road, 
If you just stay on certain drugs for diabetes, you just keep gaining weight every single year and the dose goes up and you gain more weight and the dose, that you can't lose weight that way. But if you added metformin to it, then you could lose weight and you could become less diabetic or you would need less of the other drugs. So so now it's standard of care. Standard of care. It's that, standard of care. Times so it's change. Right. And as a matter of fact, you just you were telling me that, uh, before we began today that you were just reading the most recent endocrine journal mm -hmm. and there's an article in there that says more doctors ought to be prescribing metformin and more people ought to be taking metformin for what is called pre-diabetes, which is an off-label use of that drug. Right. So, so the American College of Endocrinology says we don't have enough of our doctors giving metformin to people who are pre-diabetic, who yep. have high triglycerides, high blood sugar, high hemoglobin A1C. They actually put this in, in their uh, in their journal, yes. and they said, "So we should be doing it. Only nine or ten percent of our doctors are doing it. We should do it more to prevent diabetes." But so, that's not an FDA-approved use for metformin because it's pre-diabetes, not diabetes, right? So you haven't crossed that. So the FDA hasn't. Count. Yeah, the FDA hasn't approved it. So what, really? It's approved well, the drug. Well, the so what is the so that, what is. that people that attack what you do and what other <laughs> aging medicine specialists do, one of the attack modes they use is it's not FDA prescribed. Yeah, testosterone You're doing something dangerous. not FDA approved for, for women. Yeah. So they say that's, that's terrible that you're doing that. But in fact, every doctor I know has at one time use one or many off-label drugs they just didn't even know was approved or not approved it's very it's hard to tell it worked yeah but there you know that's that's an issue but metformin is so it's off-label for pre-diabetes and, and what does it do it helps your body eliminate carbs so they don't turn to fat well or? some you take it with a meal only you never take it without food so you have to take it with a meal and then it goes in with your food at the beginning of a meal. It goes with your food through your intestines and it helps you get rid of some of the carb in that meal. Mm -hmm. If you eat too much carb, it gives you diarrhea. So if you're getting diarrhea, you're eating too much carbohydrate. If you're getting uh, diarrhea with metformin mm -hmm. or without? No, with metformin. Then okay. If you're getting diarrhea with metformin as a side effect and you say it doesn't work, it's because of what you're eating. Okay. Yeah. And so the metformin dumps some of the sugar but if you eat too much sugar, it'll dump a lot more. So, so in other words, you're not getting that sugar load that you ate, even if, if you ate a little too much. So, so the message then is the metformin is doing what it's supposed to do. You're not doing what you're supposed right. to do. Right, that's right. <laughs> Reduce your carb intake. But that's not the only way it works. It okay. works also by by using your sugar for, ca for energy mm -hmm. and not for storage and fat. So what happens if you're insulin resistant is you just store more and more and more fat mm -hmm. and then you're hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. So this helps you actually use your energy, burn it up or use your glucose, burn it up and make energy. And so you have and it, energy. And it reduces your sense of hunger. Right. It does. It actually stops carb craving because it doesn't allow you to go up and down and up and down all day every time you have some kind of carb. So you just have little tiny blips during the day. Okay. So your blood sugar is more even. So it's a great drug for me to, when I'm looking at a patient, I'm not just looking at their hormones. I'm looking at everything I can possibly fix or change to make them healthier. So right. somebody who's coming in to see me for hormones who has pre-diabetes, God forbid, I don't treat that. Right. I mean, I give them an idea of what type of diet. I may not go through each food they should eat, but the type of diet they should follow, a type of exercise program they should follow, but also what they shouldn't eat, shouldn't drink, especially alcohol. If they're diabetics, really shouldn't drink alcohol at all. But pre-diabetics, you're just going to gain fat if you drink alcohol. So, so you're not I tell just them that. a hormone specialist. You are really looking at the the arsenal of weaponry that you have available to reduce negative health effects as people age. Right. Or prevent. Reduce, prevent. I'm prevent. trying to prevent. I don't want any of my patients to be diabetic, obese, uh, and without testosterone to be, you know, leaning over and walking with a, a walker and having yeah. no body, body muscle. I don't want any of my, um, my patients to end up being in a nursing home. I want them to live vibrantly their whole life. And so whatever tools I have, 
I use. If I know about it, I'll help them with well, it. Well, another one of those tools that you have is a drug called Arimidex. Yes. And you use Arimidex, and sometimes you put Arimidex in with the, the, in the pellet, pellet mm -hmm. that you insert. So let's talk about Arimidex. Okay, so that so I use it in an off-label use. Mm -hmm. Arimidex is a drug that was discovered when they found that actually was made for high-risk patients who are high risk for uh, breast cancer, okay. who have like a family tree or a, uh, a brick of one or two mm -hmm. uh, breast cancer because people who have that tend to make a lot of the estrogen estrone. Estrone increases as you gain weight, estrone increases as you gain age, and estrone increases as your testosterone drops. Mm -hmm. So when I see somebody who has initially low testosterone and an elevated estrone who is not obese and who does not have a family history, I don't need Arimidex. I just treat them with testosterone and their estrone goes down and their testosterone goes up and all is well. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has fibroids on their uterus, a woman has fibroids on her uterus, um, a man has a prostate that's enlarged. If uh, I have a patient that comes in and says that her breasts hurt all the time and her estrone level's high, then I'm going to treat her with testosterone and I'll put some Arimidex in the pellet so that it goes in slowly and they get a daily dose of it and that drops the estrone. It's an enzyme. It's not a, I guess it's not a drug, but it's an enzyme mm -hmm. inhibitor. It inhibits the enzyme that makes testosterone into estrone and that makes fat into estrone. Okay. So we use it off label. We also use it for weight loss for belly fat. So because that it does work for that. As and you well. use it off label for men who have a, a a risk or propensity for developing large breasts. Right. Yeah. Usually men will check that they. I mean, you can't really see it because mm -hmm. of how they dress, but mm -hmm. they'll they'll say that they have man man breasts. Mm -hmm. And so Arimidex is the treatment of choice for that, not mastectomy, because that leaves them scarred and it looks unusual. But it's an off-label treatment. But it's an off-label treatment. It's not It's yeah. not approved for that reason by the FDA, but it's used all the time for that. Another drug that gets complaints because there are side effects that come with it mm -hmm. uh, is finasteride. You have to use finasteride really carefully. All right. Finasteride um, is a medication uh, that we that is used or was meant to be used to shrink prostates. Okay, that it was so it's also called Proscar. It was meant also or it was also approved for the use of of hair loss in men only. Mm -hmm. So, those are the two uses the FDA says it should be used for. But it also can be used to um, excuse me, to decrease dihydrotestosterone, which is the hormone it it gets it decreases in men to get to accomplish these two things for women who are losing hair in a male pattern here and here mm -hmm. that's that's where testosterone it may be turning into DHT so and causing hair loss women so can benefit from women can benefit well. from it but there are rules okay. you have to be done childbearing and you can't use this pill uh, around little children you don't want children to get into it because it can change how they develop their sexual organs. Hmm. So it's, it is something for mature people to use. It is and not it's something. it's not in the pellet. It's a pill that you it's, give them. Yeah, it's a pill that we give them. Because so they have to be it's responsible easy, about it. easier to manage that way. Right. And uh, we used to put it in the pellet. And a few patients we do. But, but we've had the, here's the side effect. If you take finasteride and you take too high a dose or you're very sensitive to it, you may actually not feel the effects of your testosterone. It's not that you don't have a great testosterone level. It's, I mean, we, we're giving the testosterone. It's that it blocks the receptor sites. So if you take a little bit, it doesn't seem to matter. If you take too much for you, which is the, is the catch, then it can cause impotence. It can cause lack of libido in men and women. It can, you know, so you can't just go, oh, I need finasteride because my hair is getting a little thin. 
that's not a good reason. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to have a good reason to right. take this. It comes in several doses, and for a, we generally use the male five milligram dose for women and have it cut cut it up and have them take it like half every other day right. or half three times a week. But now, and and that was because that dose was cheap and generic. So they now and they had Propecia for men's hair loss, mm-hmm. which is only one milligram, which would have been perfect for women, but it wasn't generic and it was very expensive. So for the co- cost deal, for because of cost, we went to to the Proscar. Now Propecia is generic, so we can right. now use the lower dose, which is really what I was looking for. Right. But you don't use this. This is the medication that people shouldn't just use willy nilly for no apparent. I mean, no real reason should use it for enlarged prostate or or hair loss. But I like using it compounded in a, in a topical better, so it doesn't go through your whole body. Right. Um, and if there's any uh, ED that happens, then you should stop the finasteride unless unless you're taking it for some other reason. Because the finasteride negates the effect of the testosterone. Sometimes it fills up the receptor sites instead of the testosterone uh-huh. and it blocks the testosterone. So you, so you have test- It's like the way I see it. I, I remember when I was younger, I used to have a problem with my car not running. It, the, the engine would die. It wasn't getting any gas and it was because the gas filter was clogged and right. blocked mm-hmm. the flow of the, I mean, the tank was full mm-hmm. but couldn't get to the engine. Right. And the same thing happens with testosterone and finasteride. Right. It will block access to the engine right. and so the sex drive dissipates or disappears mm-hmm. even though you have gas in the tank. Right. That's exactly how it works. So you regulate then the amount of finasteride or you don't take it at all if the issue for you is uh, erectile function or libido drive. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we give it to people who it works great and they get no side effects. I mean, it's almost a trial and error. There's no good test for this Mm -hmm. except that you start really low on the dose and then you go up a little bit. Which makes it more critical if that's what you're trying to balance that you follow the directions. That's right. And you that take you should the dose that you're given when and how you're supposed to. Yeah, and to if take you don't know know this, if you don't know the side effects, I mean that's why you go to a doctor to give you the right instructions. But you know, if somebody thinks, oh, this is going to give me more hair, I'm going to take double the dose, yes. and they end up with ED. That's not the doctor's fault. No. And you should have you should tell the doctor what you did so we know what's going on, why that happened. It's not a matter of guilt or it's your body. It's a matter of we don't know why that's happening. And if so you've you don't done know how that. to correct for it. Right. I have pe- I have people that don't tell me they didn't take uh, their progesterone. Women who who take estrogen and I, I gave them progesterone and they didn't take it. And the only way I know is I did a blood test and there's nothing there. Yeah. And so I said, well, why? Well, or the metformin. You give yeah. them the metformin and you clearly say, take it with a meal. You have to take mm-hmm. it with food. So I'm supposed to take it with breakfast. I don't remember until 1030 and I go, oh, I better take my metformin. It mm-hmm. doesn't work that way. It doesn't way. work at all. <laughs> and then I say, well, this stuff's not working. That's right. So, so and really, you have to take it as directed. And if, you're, and if your doctor's not telling you how it's directed, you should ask him for something printed out or ask him, him or her to explain it to you. Because you can't know this, but, but that doesn't mean you should play doctor and change your dose unless your doctor or nurse practitioner tells you to change those your are, dose. Those are critical pieces of information. So, so we're talking about, A, don't be afraid automatically and reflexively because somebody says, oh, that's an off-label use of a drug. Mm-hmm. Find out about it. I mean, th- there's information. Find out. It may still be the best thing for you to do, even if it's off-label. And your doctor has the legal authority to recommend that for you, even if it's off-label for what the FDA says. Uh, the FDA says, oh, it's really good for this. They don't say you can't use it for other things. That's right. The second thing is, if they are using it, off or on label, follow the directions. It's really critical that you follow the directions. And the third thing is, remember when there are competing issues, like enough testosterone to have a sex drive or an erection, and the desire to have uh, inhibited hair loss. (laughs) So you've got testosterone and finasteride. The overall balance that you're trying to achieve is what you need to be discussing with your doctor so that you get the best mix of the two that you can get to give you results on both columns. That's right. And and never consider a medication better if you take a higher dose automatically. automatically. I mean, sometimes that's true, but 
not always. Right. So, so don't play doctor yourself. It's it's not healthy. No matter how much you played when you were younger, now that you're older, <laughs> it's really important that you follow the rules. That's right. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.